This is the Bartholomew Town Podcast. Hi, everyone. Welcome in to another edition of the Bartholomew Town Podcast. I'm your host, Bill Bartholomew. On this episode, a conversation with the CEO of United Healthcare New England, Stephen Farrell. And talking to Stephen Farrell about digital health in the age of COVID-19 and beyond, frankly. A fun conversation. I think you'll enjoy it. By the way, this is the final episode before a two-week hiatus. Can you believe it? We've been with you every Tuesday and Friday with... Seems like a zillion bonus episodes sandwiched in between each of those days all throughout the year. Going to take a couple of weeks off. Now, this isn't going to be a straight-up vacation for me. This is going to be doing a lot of preparing for B-Town's coverage of the election, obviously starting with the primary coming up and then working our way towards the general and the presidential election, mind you, coming up this November. All right, quick order of business. In case you don't follow me on social media, it's at Bill Bartholomew on Twitter and Instagram, and you can search for me on Facebook, LinkedIn, where, whatever you'd like, I should say. Um, big announcement this past Tuesday that I have joined Rhode Island PBS to uh, be a part of a new show that's going to premiere this fall. We're going to be doing sort of 60 minutes Vice News style long form television pieces hyper focused on Rhode Island. So look out for Rhode Island PBS Weekly coming this fall. I'm excited to join Bill Rapoli and Michelle San Miguel, formerly of Channel 10 here, NBC 10 in Providence, on this new venture. And uh, this will not disrupt your usual B-Town content. Still going to get you the two podcasts per week. The digital on-location reporting, of course, Governor Raimondo's press conference, COVID-19 press conference, that is, every Wednesday at 1 o'clock. And uh, whatever else may come up, radio, streaming, whatever it may be, B-Town's still there for you. And I'm actually even working on some new podcast content that goes beyond what we normally do here on B-Town. I'll just kind of tease that right there. It's all coming up later this year. Still there for you. As always, but I have signed with Rhode Island PBS in addition to all of that to uh, work on this new television project. And I can't wait to share it with you. All right. Without further ado, let's get to it. Talking telemedicine, telehealth, and digital health at large. Stephen Farrell, folks, the uh, CEO of United Healthcare New England. Thanks so much for hopping on. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So we're in an age now where, look, we've been heading there for a while in a lot of different sectors, but certainly now more than than ever in the thick of COVID-19, where there's evolution, there's sort of an expedited movement towards future trends. And obviously in the healthcare space, there's there's been a tremendous amount of that in uh, a lot of different elements, particularly when it comes to digital health. So I guess if you could kind of just talk about what digital health is and why the listeners out there should care about it. Yeah, so thanks again uh, for having me, and a great topic, very timely. Um, You know, digital health is kind of a broad uh, name here. It it really covers a lot of things. There's a range of of definitions, um, you know, from telemedicine, telehealth, to technological tools like wearable devices, and really anything that is in the healthcare uh, delivery and utilization space that is able to be uh, improved upon through digital means, right? So that that's the broad scope of digital health. Um, maybe I'll stop there. And let you respond. Well, you know, you think about <clears throat> in terms of innovations. I think a lot of people are becoming more and more familiar with telemedicine, telehealth whether it's mental health or checking in with the physician. In fact, I got screened. I had to go to the dentist. I got screened by my dentist uh, and did a telemedicine appointment before ever even scheduling an appointment for the in-office experience. But there's also, you, you'd kind of hit on sort of the tools that while there may not be a robust infrastructure for them yet, we're moving in a direction where let's say, Bluetooth stethoscopes, where you might be able to cut down on the amount of interactions between healthcare professionals and nursing homes for basic, a nursing home residence, for example, for basic um, overview care, uh, that could help prevent the spread of coronavirus. So we have this, it's, it's more than just telemedicine is, I guess, my point. Yeah, it really is. And um, I haven't heard of Bluetooth uh, stethoscopes yet. Um, <laughs> But it just gives you the impression, obviously, that this is a a very wide palette uh, that uh, technology and digitizing can 
apply. And and you're right. Uh, and we'll talk more about the wearables in a minute. But you, you know, the telehealth, telemedicine piece is the most obvious, right? Because there are um, interactions that happen in the delivery of healthcare where in person is not necessarily required. Uh, and quite frankly, obviously because of COVID-19, um, the, it, you know, and folks are staying in place. Uh, we've seen tremendous uptick in the utilization of telemedicine. Um, so, you know, 10 times more this year through June than we had all in 2019. Um, and people are very satisfied with it as well. Um, and, and, you know, previously, I think folks were maybe stuck in patterns of behavior, but this kind of changed things. And uh, I, I think collectively, we as a society have said, hey, there are a lot of places where telemedicine, telehealth, even wearable de devices and other areas for digital health care uh, can, you, you know, play a role here. And it's been very successful. So uh, telemedicine, just, just to give you a, a, a little background, telemedicine, you know, for the most part, I kind of liken some of this to, you know, when you have an issue and you go to the emergency room, or maybe now a lot of people are using an urgent care. I don't need to go. It's not that serious. Of course, we recommend uh, if anybody has anything challenging, obviously call your doctor, go to the emergency room. But, um, you know, urgent care has really evolved. Telemedicine is going down the same path. Historically, it's been like an urgent visit. You know, there's something up. Can I talk to somebody? Can I do a, a video chat? Can we walk through what needs to, to, to happen uh, without, you know, actually physically touching some, somebody? But you can use the video and you can see. Um, but now it's moving down a continuum uh, to include things, as you mentioned, a, a dental check-in, uh, behavioral health visits, uh, virtual primary care, uh, where you can have primary care uh, more broadly, you, you know, the management of chronic conditions, uh, you know, the, um, the sending of referrals, um, you, you know, prescriptions can be uh, can be offered via virtual primary care and telemedicine as well. So it continues to evolve. Um, and, and by the way, when you think about all that, in the COVID era, it's evolving and it's also safe and it's efficient and it's less expensive and it's a pleasurable experience. As I mentioned earlier, about 75% of the folks uh, using it would uh, rate it very highly and use it again. So um, really, really good growth uh, going on with uh, telemedicine. Yeah, it's sort of like the what will probably emerge in the co-working se space sector versus the uh, the towers, you know, that exist in certainly in Providence, in Boston, New York, wherever it may be in terms of just work mentalities, work spaces shifting. So too likely will medicine and how it's approached. It'll be long after the pandemic that we remain in this. And you touch on as well, the look, the ingenuity opportunities when it comes to the, the evolution of the technology, the, the, the infrastructure that can be developed here and the ideas that frankly haven't even made it to the human minds out there yet that, that are yet to come. There's a lot of space um, from, an, from an engineering side still to come. Absolutely. This is the, uh, the innovation opportunity, uh, maybe better than any, right? Healthcare uh, it being such a big piece of uh, our, um, you know, lifestyle, uh, out of our culture, uh, out of the GDP. Uh, everybody's involved in healthcare one way or another needs to be. Uh, in the delivery of healthcare, receiving it, delivering healthcare, uh, and it's not been the fastest to move along, kind of the uh, technological and digital, um, you know, innovative development, and and this is a big part of that um, uh, digital healthcare and telemedicine, but there are other pieces uh, to that as well, right? And we spoke earlier about 
you know, wearable devices. Um, I'll give you um, an example. We have a, 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 a product called Motion that's embedded in our health insurance uh, plan designs that we offer to the community. And um, Motion is uh, where you use a wearable device like a Fitbit or an Apple Watch or something like that, and it tracks your steps. Uh, and if you uh, achieve certain levels of activity via step tracking during the day, you get credits, daily credits, uh, that can equal over $1,000 a year that you can use to, let's say, offset a deductible. Um, so that's a very innovative and kind of neat way to blend technology, di digital uh, wearable device into uh, the healthcare insurance area, uh, as an example. This is the Bartholomew Town Podcast. B-Town listeners, if you enjoy the journalism, opinion, analysis, and entertainment that Bartholomew Town has become known for, consider becoming a Bartholomew Town insider or making as little as a $3 monthly contribution to help sustain this program. Head over to patreon.com slash Bartholomew Town or click the support link wherever you're listening right now. For daily digital content, search for Bartholomew Town or me, Bill Bartholomew, on your preferred social media app. Yeah, that's fascinating. That was my next thought was what does telemedicine do big picture, you know, 36,000 foot view to just the cost of medical care? I mean, look, there are folks out there that are certainly in one way or another, they confront enormous medical bills and they're the, the varying nature of ins of insurances out there um there's certainly inequities that exist and that some of them are baked into the cake they're somewhat s systemic so how can digital health sort of level the playing field for all folks out there when it comes to their health care but also from the perspective of the insurance industry how can it create you know maybe not obviously a loss in revenue because that's certainly not the goal on your end but how can it just make things seem a little more bit more fair broadly yeah, I think there are two things that um, that really uh, improve with the use of, of telemedicine. One, um, you know, if, if standardly, prior to this uh, COVID-19 increase and, um, you know, acceptability uh, across the general public of, of the use of telemedicine, prior to that, uh, folks would, many folks would access their primary care. Uh, but a lot of folks didn't, um, and and folks would use emergency rooms uh, because they didn't keep up with primary care. I think now in telemedicine that not only can you access a physician, but you're going to be able to access your specific physician. Um, I think a lot of people must have thought for, for a long time, uh, such and so is happening. If only I could just call my doctor. No, they felt, well, maybe I have to go in and see the doctor. If I can't do that, I'll go to an urgent care or an emergency room. So, you know, emergency and urgent care, not efficient, very expensive. Um, maybe you're not going uh, and getting something checked out that you need to be have checked out. And so things get worse and turn into being more uh, expensive services later on down the road. And I think those are two areas where you could avoid more expensive sites of care like the emergency room, and two, where you can more, um, you know, timely interact with your physician to take care of things like chronic illnesses. I think both those things will have great reward relative to improved healthcare quality, lower healthcare cost, and the improved healthcare experience by the patient or the consumer. And, and in healthcare, that's called the triple aim. Quality up, cost down, improved experience. It's the triple aim of healthcare. Yeah, the experience is so critical and it, it's what keeps people coming back. And it's interesting going back to that 75% or nearly 75% of patients who have used telehealth during the, the pandemic plan to use it again. You know, it does suggest that things are moving forward. Are we in the thick of a digital health revolution right now? I think absolutely. You know, and we're just talking telemedicine. It's the easy thing to do. 
uh, it, it, you know, it, it's the easy conversation to have, uh, but there's more to it, right? So uh, I'll give you another example. Um, we have um, on our website, and you know, we have uh, you know a very strong interactive uh, app that uh, our members, uh, you know, healthcare members can use uh, that gives you all sorts of information, empowers people. Uh, to be in control of their healthcare, you could shop for services, you could do things like that. Uh, but when COVID came, uh, we put on the app and we put on the website uh, a service called Buoy, which is a diagnostic tool, right? And this is a big deal because people, you know, in COVID, I, I can remember, I, I, I never got tested and, I, and I'm absolutely fine, but I at least five times over the last few months said, I must have COVID. Of course, I yeah. didn't have it, uh, you know, like many other people. But you know, maybe one of the things you want to do is go on to a diagnostic tool like this buoy on the app or the website uh, to answer questions. It goes through, you, you, you know, a, a, an algorithm of questions uh, that leads to kind of a diagnosis with a 95% or better accuracy rate. And then along with the diagnosis gives you some guidance of what steps you should take next. I mean, that is, in my mind, wonderfully relieving for people, you know, in in a pandemic who are saying, geez, do I have it? What am I going to do? Um, and that is a neat diagnostic tool that can be accessed instead of, again, going to a hospital three hours in an emergency room or even in urgent care. Um, and you can do it at your own leisure any time of the day and very accurate. Uh, so that's a very good example of, you know, uh, additional applications of technology and digitizing in the healthcare space. Last area here, there's obviously still without question, you know, we're not, we're not at the point where we're going to have robots a hundred percent autonomously conducting surgeries now, or certainly not there anytime soon, most likely um, maybe down the line though. But right now, look, you're, if, you know, you, you can go through a phase with telemedicine, digital health protocols. Eventually, you are going to have, in some many cases, you're going to have to see a doctor. Do you think we're still trying to figure out as an industry, as, as a society, how to sort of organize that process when, you know, it's time to bypass telemedicine and go to a doctor and recognize, hey, look, I need to be seen immediately in person. And will telemedicine and digital health at large help to sort of clear some of the muck out of the way so that people can more simply go to a community health center or their primary care physician on the same day? Is this going to help sort of clear out some of that extra, um, not necessarily, I guess, for, you know, with running the risk of seeming rude folks who go that don't need to go, getting them out of the way and turning them to telemedicine uh, for people who really do have that urgent need to be seen in person. Yeah, I, I think you hit on something really uh, very important, uh, and that is when a healthcare event is taking place, um, I think we all get a little anxious uh, and uh, have questions. And, um, you know, what should I do? Should I go to the emergency room? A lot of people do uh, things like that. Um, because they are not sure and it's better to be safe than sorry. And that's wise. Um, but I think you're bringing up a very good point. Will this um, improved accessibility uh, provide a, an avenue for folks entertaining though that decision point where they can access very quickly um, their physician um, and sometimes there's sometimes it's not just your physician. There are other organizations, right? And the difference between telemedicine and telehealth, like you know, uh, American Well or Doctors on Demand. Uh, and again, you can do it right on your cell phone on our app and connect directly and very quickly. And you'll get a physician of which you can have that discussion and say, "Here's what happened. Here's what's going on." Uh, it, it's a, a video conference. Maybe they can see and can give you immediate feedback on what you should do. And maybe you should go immediately into a, an emergency room or whatever the guidance is. Having that professional guidance at your fingertips, we never had that before. 
right? Yeah. Now you'll have that. That I think is so much more uh, appealing uh, to kind of take some of the guesswork and, and anxiety out of the experience. Right? Completely agree. I, and I can say firsthand, you know, throughout the pandemic, I've, I've taken advantage. I, I mentioned dental, but also, Hey, look, you know, I've been on the horn with my doctor and, um, the same thing, you know, you go, wow, do I, do I need to get tested? Maybe I do. All right, let's get tested or, or whatever it is. Um, the anxiety element of it is, is a huge factor. There's no doubt about it. Um, Stephen Farrell, he's the CEO of United Healthcare New England. Thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it very much. Thank you very much. Have a great day. You too. This is the Bartholomew Town Podcast. Remember, Bartholomew Town is your election central right here in Rhode Island. Stay tuned for in-depth coverage of the primaries, and we'll take you all the way through November and beyond. At HealthSource RI for Employers, we provide access to health insurance to more than 1,100 local businesses and nonprofits, and 96% of them renew through us every year. Maybe it's our choice of 19 different health plans, our 10 years of customizing solutions, or our one local team of dedicated experts helping employers find quality health insurance. See how our numbers stack up for you. Learn more at healthsourceri.com slash employers.